In this video, I'll be talking about the endgame content in Arcage Unchained, what to do once you hit level 55, dailies, sandbox content, dungeons, how to make money, how to progress your gear, as well as what fun stuff you can look forward to doing and progress towards. If you haven't done so already, I highly recommend checking out my Arcage Unchained Ultimate Beginner's Guide, as there's a lot of basic stuff mentioned in that video that I won't be covering in this video, such as class selection, how to upgrade gear whilst leveling, and so on. So, you've followed everything I've said in my previous guide and you've just hit level 55 from grinding Aegis Island in a group. You've got an ultimate glider, you have a mount, a basic robo and a battle pet, and you've also got the stats you wanted on your Haram gear via re-rolling the stats with Adventurer's Everstones before upgrading the gear at level 50. What's next? After hitting level 55 and maxing out your XP to 100%, you have the option to progress further in Arcade Unchained via Ancestral Levels. This is something you definitely want to do, as it allows you to morph certain abilities to become more powerful or gain additional utility. To activate the Ancestral Leveling, you need to buy an Honor Forged Medal, which costs 2000 Honor. You can buy this by opening the Character Window and finding it on the Honor Shop, then press K, click the Ancestral tab and click the arrow pointing upwards to consume the medal and become Ancestral Level 1. If you don't have 2000 honor to spend upon hitting level 55, all you need to do is kill mobs or do one Hiram daily quest and identify a piece of green unidentified Hiram gear. You'll receive a box that will give you 10,000 honor points the first time you do this. You unlock new ancestral ability morphs at levels 3, 4, 7, 10 and 13. At each of these levels you can upgrade a new skill from each skill set, although sometimes the default skill will be better than the morphed ancestral skill options depending on your playstyle so make sure you actually read what changing these abilities does. In addition to this, each ancestral level up will also give you multiple flat stat upgrades so really there's no reason to just stay at level 55 in this game. Once your battle pet is level 50, you can buy a cloaked improved pet accessory box for 20 gold from any stable hand. You should do this as soon as possible because your pet will become super OP and be able to solo most Aegis Island and Western Haram Mountain mobs. Make sure to get the armor that gives the stats that benefit your pet the most. For my wolf pet, the best stats were strength, so I chose the desert box option. Upon hitting level 55, you should spend some time to continue the green main quest line, as eventually you'll be rewarded with a super fast and useful Aulina mount, as well as 100 gold. This mount is better than all the starting area mounts and will last you for a long time, so it's well worth getting. The quest line isn't that hard, and your pet with the upgraded armor should be able to take care of any challenges that you might face. The next way you're going to be progressing at endgame is through upgrading your gear, and here we need to talk about the part of Arcage Unchained that quite frankly sucks balls, the daily quests. The most important daily quests you're going to be doing are the Haram dailies that will reward you with infusions to upgrade your gear, and awakening scrolls to progress your gear to the next tier once that piece of gear has the maximum experience infused into it from the infusions. There's six zones in which you can get Haram dailies. In order of easiest to hardest, it's the following. Diamond Shores has one daily that gives three green infusions and no awakening scrolls. Sometimes I skip this because I prefer to only use blue infusions. Exolock has one daily kill 50 mobs quest. Sun Gold Fields has one daily kill 50 mobs quest. Red Wind has one daily kill 100 elite mobs quests. Western Haram Mountains has three daily Haram quests, each for killing 50 mobs. Eastern Haram Mountains has four daily Haram quests, two for killing bosses and two for killing 50 mobs. For all of these daily quests, except for the one in Diamond Shores, you're going to be given the choice between infusions or awakening scrolls. Always pick awakening scrolls, except for the quests in Eastern Haram Mountains, where you're going to pick the 10 or 20 blue infusions. This is the fastest and most efficient way to progress. The reason you always pick the awakening scrolls is there's no other way to obtain them other than the dailies, and you need a lot of them. You have ways of getting infusions outside of these daily quests, so just take my word for it. When doing these daily Haram quests, I highly recommend just finding a large group via the raid finder and blitz through it all together. A good group will have all these quests done and finished within 40 minutes to 1 hour. 
I touched on this briefly in my beginner's guide, but at 12pm in game time you have Crimson Rifts, and at midnight in game time you have Grimcast Rifts. These daily quests are well worth doing as they give multiple rewards such as honor points, infusions, and Gilder Stars. Crimson Rift, you just take three quests from a guard in either Cinderstone Moor for the west or Yenistir for the east and go kill mobs followed by two bosses. For fully completing this, you'll get 900 honor points, 9 infusions from the boxes, and 6 Gilder Stars from the two world bosses. For Grimcast Rift, you take the quest from the Notice Board in either Cinderstone Moor for the West, or Yenistir for the East, between 2200 hours and midnight, where you'll need to deliver some materials which you can buy off the auction house and give them to an NPC. The next quest asks you to deliver two trade packs to help the war effort. These trade packs spawn at 20 past midnight in game time, and you'll see a ton of people with wagons preparing to transport the packs. After you've transported the packs, you get two quests for killing mobs, followed by two bosses that spawn. In total, you get eight Gilder Stars, 900 Honor, and nine Infusions for fully completing the event and killing the bosses. Do note that for both of these events, you should try and find a group via the Raid Finder fairly early, as if you leave it too late, it can be really hard to find a group and finish the quests. If progressing your gear is a big priority, then something you're going to want to do ASAP is get 4000 gear score so you can participate in the Golden Plains Battle Instance, which is a 100v100 PvP deathmatch mode. Each day you get a quest from one of the NPCs in Cinderstone Moor or Yenistir that will give you a 1000 labour recharge just for participating, win or lose. In addition, you also get a minimum of 1500 honour, win or lose, as well as infusions. You can do Golden planes battle a maximum of three times per day, but will only receive the 1000 labor reward once. As much as this content is a bit of a laggy shit show most of the time, it's very rewarding regardless of outcome. You can only queue for golden planes battle at certain times of the day, so check the instance finder for info as to when it's available. Fall of Haram City is a daily PvE raid available through the Instance Finder at certain times of the day that requires 4000 gear score to join. It's essentially a test of cooperation between 20 players to gather resources and defend refugees as they make their way from three different paths to the shelter. On the way they'll be attacked by wolves, they'll need to have burners lit so they don't suffer in the cold too much, and they'll need to have resources to support them at the shelter. I'm not going to go too in depth on this one as I'm not too good at it myself, but it rewards you with a lot of honour and vocation. Well worth doing for sure. Family quests and vocation quests are how you're going to obtain vocation points in Arcage Unchained, which can translate directly into gold either via buying things with vocation points to sell on the auction house, or buying things to harvest with vocation points which can result in much better silver to labour value than harvesting crops and livestock that you buy with silver. To do family quests, you obviously need to join a family. If you want to make your own family with a friend, just buy a family certificate from the general goods vendor for one gold, and slash family invite space friend's name. Family quests are pretty much the same every day. Deliver a trade pack overseas, I usually skip this one. Help a community center, I usually do this one because it involves buying like 30 fabric from the auction house and selling it to an NPC. And the other one is either grow a pumpkin, chop a tree, get honey from a beehive and so on. This type of quest requires a minimum of two people to complete and rewards each player with 1500 vocation. Usually I do this quest with my girlfriend playing on her account on my laptop. Other than that, you can craft these things called hearty meals, which give a total of four daily quests. You craft the meal, click on the item in your inventory, then hand them in to an NPC. Really easy stuff, and each quest rewards you with five gold, one Gilder Star, and 300 vocation points. To find out how to craft the hearty meals, just press O to open the folio, type in the word hearty, and buy everything you need to make these meals off the auction house. To craft these meals, you need to use an improved scale Scarecrow 16x16 farm. 
Honestly, I haven't bothered with too many guild quests in Arcade Unchained yet, but at the start of every day, open the guild tab and just accept every guild quest. You'll passively earn prestige and guild XP from killing world bosses or doing the Diamond Shores bunker quest that Haram daily groups tend to do. It's actually quite important that you eventually get to 150 guild prestige, as you can then buy the best in slot guild cloak from the prestige shop once your guild hits level 3, and then level it up the same way you do your Haram gear, but instead of using Hiram infusions to upgrade the cloak, you need to use something called Aurorian Synthesis Shards, which can drop from mobs. Every time the Aegis Island and Whale Song Harbour zones transition into war, events will spawn with daily quests that reward 1800 honor points each for full completion, as well as some Gilder Stars for killing the bosses. This is worth doing as you need a lot of honor later on for progressing your gems. To get these events done, you're going to want to look for a group in the Raid Finder. Personally, I usually don't have time to do these events every day, so I tend to skip them. One of the few dailies I actually consider fun in Arcade Unchained is the Drill Camp PvP Battleground, which is anything from 5v5 to 10v10 equalized team deathmatch PvP that can be ended early if you kill the enemy team's ancient slash inhibitor looking thing. You can queue for Drill Camp 5 times per day and it rewards you with blue infusion boxes as well as Kairos badges which you can spend on titles that give you stats. In the middle of Diamond Shores, you've got this big dungeon called the Library. Every four hours, bosses here have a static spawn timer and are killed by groups for daily quests that give a good amount of money at the cost of no labor and very little time. Keep an eye on the nation chat and when people start Xing up for a library group, check the raid finder and try to join one. The way this works is that there's three floors, each of which spawn two bosses. You'll automatically get a quest to kill these bosses once you're in range of them, and they reward the following. 7.5 gold for each boss on floor 1, 10.5 gold for each boss on floor 2, and 13.5 gold for each boss on floor 3. This gold comes from selling the mana prints that you'll receive from completing the quests, meaning for killing all six bosses you can get 63 gold at the cost of no labor in the space of around 20 to 30 minutes or so. Dungeons in Arcade Unchained are actually somewhat fun and the bosses have some decently interesting mechanics. It's not really World of Warcraft style PvE or anything, but they're a decent way to make some money without spending labor and something fun you can do with a group of friends. Currently Arcade has 10 different dungeons, some designed for 5 players, some for 10, each of which have different levels of difficulty, with Mist Song Summit being the current hardest. When it comes to raiding and endgame PvE, Arcage doesn't really offer the same style of content as WoW, Final Fantasy XIV, or even ESO. It does, however, have more raiding content than Black Desert Online, for example. Raiding in Arcage comes in the form of world bosses which spawn in the world and are usually killed by pug groups. Not a whole lot of challenge here, really. You've also got instanced raids, such as Red Dragon's Keep and Kadem, both of which require 6,000 gear score and 50 players to attempt. I can't really speak of the quality of this content as I don't have 6,000 gear score and haven't done it myself. You've got the Leviathan Sea Monster, which has only ever been killed one or two times in the history of the game on normal arcade servers. Really cool monster, but unlikely that anyone will kill it on Unchained for a very long time. And you've got the Thunderwing Titan boss, which players of your faction could spawn by contributing to building magical towers in Reedwind. After they're built, wings will appear on the backs of your raids, and you fight this epic beast in the air. It looks like a really cool fight, haven't done it myself yet though. The raiding in Arcade Unchained seems like it's mostly designed for 50 player groups, and is either a complete face roll, or has extremely high gear requirements to participate in. Abyssal Attack is an event that occurs once per day at a set time in which an Abyssal Kraken is summoned in the Sea of Graves. This is essentially PvPVE content that can earn you 120 gold with a silver to labor ratio of 40, which is very good. Basically the way this works is that each faction sails their ships out to the Kraken and outranges it with cannons until it dies. When the Kraken dies, a player will need to interact with an object that spawns and channel an ability for 5 minutes. 
Islands. During this time, three lodestone crystals appear on three surrounding islands and need to be protected by your faction, otherwise channeling is interrupted and the process starts over. Once channeling has been completed, you can mine purple crystals that spawn on the center island for 25 labor. You then take these crystals to the center island workbench and craft an abyssal trade pack worth 120 gold for 300 labor. You can then hand these into any relic trader with zero labor turning cost. Beware though, as pirates and reds will be hunting people down for these packs to steal for themselves. Shadow invasions can spawn one minute after the deaths of eight specific world bosses. After that, mobs will spawn and eventually a boss, which will drop a material that you can then use to craft a trade pack. Currently, only one player in the raid can loot the material that you use to craft the trade pack, and even then, if you do get the material to craft the pack, it costs 15 gold to make 45 to 60 back. So it's not super worth going out of your way for this content. At this point I've mentioned pretty much all the daily stuff and more structured content that you can do in Arcage Unchained to progress, but one of the biggest things I haven't touched on a lot is gold making. Making money is core to your progression in Arcage, as every time you infuse gear, gem gear, temporal weapon, or do basically anything progression wise, it costs both labour and gold. It's all well and good having the labour for upgrades, but if you suck at making money then you still can't upgrade your gear, so you need to find a balance between spending your labour on gold making and gear upgrading. I'm just going to get to the point and tell you that as far as gold making goes, you've got a few good options. Sports fishing. This in my opinion is the best way to make gold on a reliable basis in Arcage Unchained, as the price of the fish remains the same regardless of how many players are fishing, which is in contrast to running trade packs where the value decreases based on demand. To really make money sports fishing, you're gonna wanna get a long line of fishing boat. This costs 500 gilder, or you could do the smart thing that everyone else does, and just join fishing raids to complete an achievement that gives you the design for free. After you've got the design, it costs just over 1000 gold in resources to finish building the boat. Sports fishing takes some investment to get started with, but once you're set up with your own boat, it's probably the most sustainable, chill way to make money in this game. To get started working towards the sports fishing method, you need to make yourself a clipper boat which costs 50 gilder from Mirage Isle. Buy a sports fishing lure and attach it to your fishing rod by clicking on it in your inventory. You'll get a buff that lasts for two hours. If you only have a clipper boat, you want to join a fishing raid and rely on others to find the fishing spots. Join a raid via the chat or the raid finder and make your way to the fishing spot. Cast your rod out when the fishing spot has the feeding frenzy buff and wait. Eventually a fish will bite and you need to press the glowing buttons to slowly damage the fish. Initially you'll do fuck all damage to the fish and it'll be really hard to catch one, but once your fishing proficiency is at 10k, you can craft a sturdy green fishing pole to more than double your damage to the fish. After the fish is dead, go loot it and it turns into a trade pack. Take the trade pack to a fish stand at any port and you'll be given a flat fee based on the size and type of the fish. Easy stuff. Once you have your fishing boat, you can store multiple fish packs on it at once, meaning you can make a solid 150 gold plus per hour due to not having to return back and forth so often. Two tips I can give is to buy the Dawn's Drop boots from the auction house or with vacation points to boost your proficiency to 5k, meaning you only need another 5k proficiency for a better rod. Do the Blue Salt Brotherhood fishing quest line either in Cinderstone Moor for the west or Yenisteer for the east to learn more about fishing and eventually get a title that boosts your proficiency by another 1000. Obviously when sports fishing there's always the risk of pirates or reds killing you and stealing your fish packs, so I'd advise fishing with a group of friends or other regular fishermen so there's a bit more safety in numbers. Trade packs. This method depends a lot on supply and demand and requires that you finish the Blue Salt Brotherhood questline for the farm wagon to be able to transport five trade packs at a time. The location of your land also has an impact on how viable this method is, as some housing areas are better than others for trade packs. Due to the ever-changing prices of packs, I want to focus on packs that seem to be the most popular to run at the moment due to their steady price, and these are the aged packs. 
Basically, if you're playing the East faction, get a 16x16 improved Scarecrow in Rakala, or if you're on the West, get a 16x16 improved Scarecrow in Anima. Make Aging Larders by interacting with your improved Scarecrow. To make these, you need a Royal Seed, which can be purchased either from the Auction House or with Vocation. If you have your farm wagon, make 5 larders at a time. Once you've set your larder down, you have 10 minutes to put in the necessary ingredients needed to make a pack. You'll start with salve packs, as your commerce level will be too low to make the others. For each larder, you'll need 30 olives and 20 cultivated ginseng to make an aged salve pack. After 3 days, you can then harvest it and turn it into a trade pack, which you'll then transfer to the Solace Specialty Buyer on the east, or the Souls Read Specialty Buyer on the west. Your money will be mailed to you 8 hours later. Tip: When transporting goods, make sure all the zones you need to travel through on your journey have their peace timers lined up, so you can get from A to B safely without the risk of being killed and having your packs stolen. If you have a group of friends or a guild with decent players, one of the highest silver to labor returns in Arcage is sailing the seas, killing other players for trade or fishing packs, and then handing them in yourself. This doesn't require a lot of explanation really, and is probably one of the most fun things you can do in a group in Arcage. All it takes is a little bit of organization, teamwork, and ships to transport your loot. There's obviously a lot of other professions in Arcage, such as cooking, alchemy, carpentry, and so on, but as of making this video, the money you can make from these professions seems really low to non-existent. Of course, every server is different and the market can always change, but if you want to pursue a money-making method in making consumables, it's more about stockpiling resources, checking the market for profit margins, and playing the long game in hopes it will pay off in the future when more players need high-level consumables. Another piece of endgame Arcage Unchained offers is Castle Sieges, but honestly this is content that a very small percentage of the player base will actually get to see. The way this works is that each faction leader selects 40 players each to go fight and take control of the North Continent, so realistically it's just the top geared players of your server, so I don't really know how this works other than I'll never get to experience this content. If you're tired of combat and want to kick back and relax a bit, something you can work and progress towards in Arcage Unchained is getting a big house and filling it with furniture to roleplay with your friends or fulfill a sense of worth that's lacking in your real life. Regardless, one of the things I love about this game is that it has real space player housing and it's one of my personal goals to have a big house surrounded by farms so I can pretend that my character has some form of status, which he certainly doesn't have with his embarrassing gear score. But that's pretty much everything I can think of in regards to the endgame content that Arcage Unchained offers really. After making this video, it kinda dawned on me that the game really isn't as sandboxy as I initially thought and it kinda lacks fun content that brings guilds together a few nights every week. If you're not aware already, Arcage Unchained is the most ping-reliant MMO on the market, and better ping translates directly to better DPS in this game. If you have over 80 or 100 MS ping, I highly recommend using Exit Lag as a ping booster, as without this software, I personally couldn't play this game all the way from Thailand. Exit Lag has a 3-day free trial, no credit card info required, and no reoccurring subscription by default, so you've got nothing to lose in giving it a try, and seeing if you notice the difference. Difference. Referral link in the description below and code the lazy peon at the checkout for 20% off. But that's it for this video guys, the next Arcage Unchained video will most likely be a final thoughts and review, so subscribe if you haven't done so already if you're interested in seeing that. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again really soon.